Yo, what's going on, Raider Nation? It is your boy, Raiders underscore 1995, man, a.k.a. Byron, man. It's been a cool minute, man, since I've been posting one of these videos. I need to get back to my consistency. Was really busy, but then I've been bullshitting along the way, but I'm trying to cut that out and, you know, post more consistent videos for y'all. But anyways, man, I wanted to bring up this one topic to y'all, which C.O. Moore. Now, C.O. Moore was one of my favorite Raiders when he was with us. He was a fan favorite, always showed the fans some love, always made sure, you know, he gave 110% out there. He steadily started improving, you know, did some things, some questionable stuff that probably got him kicked off the team. Well, not kicked off the team, well, cut from the team. And then there was that injury, and then, you know, just, to, you know, just explain what all happened to his career. But anyways, before this video even start, show the nation some love, man. He is the one that did this thumbnail and it looks dope as hell. This dude is the best editor for, for basically for the Raider Nation I've ever seen. Like he the Golden State Warriors when it comes to this editing game. So make sure you give him a follow. Make sure you say what's up to him. But anyways, y'all, let's get into the video. Now, Snorcio Moore, or as we call him, Seal Moore, was born in Liberia in West Africa. His family would move when he was just a small child and would locate in New Haven, Connecticut. Seal would then attend New Haven High School, but would transfer to Apex High School in North Carolina. While he was attending Apex High School, Seal Moore played track and football. Now in football, Seal played fullback, running back, and linebacker as we all know. CO earned all area and all tri seven football league honors as a fullback and a linebacker in his senior year while he was in high school. Despite all of his accomplishments, CO Moore would only be ranked as a two star recruit and was only ranked 50th in the nation among weak side linebackers. He would eventually commit to the University of Connecticut. In his freshman year, C.O. Moore would only play in four games and only have six tackles and wouldn't see that much action, but that would all change in his sophomore year. Now in his sophomore year, C.O. would play 13 games and, were, and would have 110 tackles, 11 and a half tackles for loss. He had one and a half sack, two forced fumbles, and one interception. Also during that season, he was the second most in tackles and fourth most in the Big Eastern Conference. Now in his junior year, C.O. Moore would play in 12 games. He would have 86 tackles, 16 tackles for loss, six and a half sacks and two forced fumbles, six pass deflections and three interceptions. Also in his junior year, he had the most sacks on the team on that defense that year. Now we're gonna follow up with the senior year Played in 12 games, 72 tackles, 11 and a half tackles for loss, 7.5 sacks, 7 and a half sacks, 11 pass deflections, and he had the second most sacks on the team that year and led the team in tackles for loss. Now, his tackles did go on a decline from college when you look at it, 110 tackles, then he went to 86 tackles, then he went to 72 tackles, but if you look, he, he mainly improved on his sack total going from 1.5 sacks then going to 6.5 sacks and then going to 7.5 sacks so showing that he could be an all-around player for that UConn defense while he was there but not only that he was also getting his draft stock up at the NFL combine and was showing off his pass rushing moves at the senior bowl now in the 2013 NFL draft the Oakland Raiders drafted C.O. Moore in the third round in that 2013 season which would be CO's rookie season he would start 11 of the 15 games he played that season Moore would have 50 tackles four and a half sacks and one forced fumble his best game that season would come in week nine against Pittsburgh where CO had five tackles and two sacks on Ben Roethlisberger and if you talk to all defenders it is extremely hard to get Ben Roethlisberger down. It's hard, like, the dude is 6'5", and he just pushes defenders off, and the fact that a rookie C.O. Moore got two sacks on him that game is fucking incredible. 
He also made All-Team Rookie in 2013 and eventually played now in 2014. Fast forwarded to his sophomore year with the Raiders. The Raiders would draft Khalil Mack to help out that linebacking core. So now you had Khalil Mack on one side and then you had C.O. Moore on the other. Now, this would help C.O. Moore improve. He would have 90 tackles, three sacks, one pass deflection, and one forced fumble in that year of 2014. But two games in particular where C.O. Moore was making media headlines and not in the best way. The first game will be in week 12 against the Kansas City Chiefs where he had a very good game where he had 12 tackles and he had a sack on Alex Smith. But the costly mistake, as, as we all know, was the dance celebration, which was this on a critical third down, fourth down play. Now, despite that, the Raiders would win the game, but it would almost cost them. And Justin Tuck verbalized that it, it that they almost basically fought. But it is what it is. It's an honest mistake. But then again, you can't make stuff like that in the NFL, or else it's going to cost you. And the second game where Moore would make even more headlines was in Week 14 against the San Francisco 49ers, the Battle of the Bay in Oakland. We all know about this game. It's very passionate, especially for people in the Bay Area at that time. And this instant, in this week, him and Colin Kaepernick would be getting at it, especially in halftime where this had happened. Now, in that game, C.O. Moore only had one tackle the entire game, but it was on Colin Kaepernick during the game. Now, after the game, C.O. Moore would go onto his Instagram account saying this, there's a difference between men and boys, freaking chump, basically calling out Colin Kaepernick, basically calling him a chump, and I'm not even gonna lie, when this first came through, and I remember I was on Instagram when I saw it, I was hyped as hell. I was over there like, C.O., is that dude he's getting into controversies getting in opponents heads but wasn't the best way to do it but i know all of us fans were hyped up when we saw this and saw the trash talk in the battle of the bay we had won that game so it it seemed like the perfect story now after that game co moore would be placed on ir due to a hip injury and unfortunately that would end his 2014 season but i already said the stats that he posted after that so now comes in 2015, and this is where stuff starts to get dicey. The Raiders decided they needed a new head coach. So on January 16, 2015, the Oakland Raiders decided to hire Jack Del Rio as their new head coach for the 2015 season. And it already started off that it was apparent that the two did not see eye to eye. Maybe there was some beef. There was rumored to be a beef between C.O. Moore and Jack Del Rio because of the maturity issues, but still we do not, we, we still don't know. And then there was an incident where C.O. Moore was not on his Instagram and had deleted his social media and then came back to Twitter and then had fire off on a reporter for him saying that he was back on it. But before the 2015 season even began, C.O. Moore was traded to the Indianapolis Colts for a six-round draft pick. Later on, Jack Del Rio said 
he wasn't going to make the team. He said that the Raiders had brought in two backers, which would be Ben Heaney and Nuren Ball, then brought in two more linebackers in free agency with Curtis Lofton coming from the Saints and then Malcolm Smith coming from the Seahawks. And they had two returning players with linebackers Ray Ray Armstrong and Lorenzo Neal. And it's funny because during that uh, side note, even after uh, before Jack Del Rio got fired, none of these linebackers on the, on were on the roster. But anyways, I just find that funny. Anyways, but in the 2015 season, Moore would play in 12 games, but would not start in any of them, and only finish the season with just 13 tackles in 2015. Now in 2016. Theo Moore would start the first four games for the Indianapolis Colts. He would finish that with 30 tackles. But going into the Colts bye week in week five, the Colts decided to cut Theo Moore. So now gets traded to the Colts and then gets cut by the Colts. But th just three days later, but just three days later, the Kansas City Chiefs would sign Theo Moore to a deal to play for the Kansas City Chiefs. But he would not have any playing time, wouldn't start, wouldn't play at all, and was later cut a month later. So now in mid-November of that year, 2016, C.O. Moore would now sign with his third different team, being with the Raiders, then being with the Colts, then being with the Chiefs and now the third team he's playing with this season or I should say the 2016 season he would play for the Arizona Cardinals now he would start in the last three of the four games for the Arizona Cardinals that season in those three starts in those four games he played he had 35 tackles one pass deflection and two forced fumbles but at the end of the season, they would decide to not re-sign him, which meant he would have to look elsewhere for a different job. In the 2017 season, C.O. Moore would sign a contract with the Houston Texans in early June. But unfortunately, before the regular season even began, C.O. Moore was cut from the Houston Texans. And unfortunately, he has not played football ever since. He hasn't been with a team or nothing like that. But... What I want to say is, even though his career was short, and I hope he, he can find some type of work, of any work, if to help C.O. Moore out, he was one of my favorite linebackers when he was with us those two years. He was energetic. He did those sack dances. He was for the Raider Nation. He loved the Raider Nation. He would, he would be engaged with the fans on social media. A lot of us know that. And it was a shame. Maybe if it wasn't for Jack Del Rio, he would still be on the team. I don't know. Maybe it's because of the hip injury. Maybe it's because teams just saw the maturity issues. Or maybe they saw he wasn't that great. Me, personally, I thought if C.O. Moore would have been with us. And we needed linebacker help all those years that he was gone. C.O. Moore was just a nice piece. And I miss the dude. Love the man. Not only that, I remember, if you guys remember, in my early YouTube years, I used to do highlight videos and i did a highlight video for co more but due to copyright it got taken down i posted it on my instagram and i was tagging co more to see if he would see it and he responded with this comment right here and that meant the world to me that the dude even saw my video and he even commented on it which made me feel good which co more was a good person deep down man it's just a shame that his career had to end it the way it did but just want to let you know co the Raider Nation loves you, man. Everybody here loves you. Thank you for everything you did in your two short years with the Oakland Raiders. And I wish it would have ended better, but it is what it is. And as you guys know, I do the hashtag, you know, the nation still loves you. But I've been looking everywhere and I cannot find, I think CO Moore deleted his Instagram and Twitter. I'm not sure, like I said, I've been looking for it, but I can't find it. So I would normally tell you guys to go over there and hit, hit him with the hashtag and all that, but it looks like that he doesn't have one. But anyways, y'all, I just want to bring this video to y'all. Tell me what you guys think. What are your thoughts on CO Moore? Did you guys love him? Did you guys hate him? Let me know in the comment section, man. Follow me on Instagram, man. You already know the deal. Like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Links will be in the description. Love y'all, Raider Nation, and I will see y'all in the next video.